The mid to late 2000s were a really odd time when it came to different drivers coming in and out of the NASCAR Cup Series in particular. And one of those drivers that a lot of people look back on, kind of confused with, is David Rudiman. Rudiman wasn't the flashiest driver. He wasn't one that was going to be the best looking. He wasn't one that was going to be the most talented. He wasn't one that was going to be the archetype of a NASCAR driver. He was there. He seemed serviceable. But now looking back on it, his career is kind of confusing to look at as a fan. So that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to ask the question, how good was David Rudiman? So what we're going to do is look at the top three series that he was in and his results in them, as well as a few big moments. So we're going to look at the truck series, Xfinity series, and the cup series, and his big moments in cup. Starting with the truck series, he did three full-time seasons driving for Daryl Waltrip in this series, and he did okay to good. The first two seasons, he ran kind of mediocre, 13th and 14th in points, but the thing is, he got a good number of top fives and top tens. Nothing to write home about. His average finish in both seasons was 16th, but he wasn't bad. The problem was is that he couldn't keep the car on track. You see, he had seven DNFs in 2004 alone, but he did cut it down to four the next year. Where he really peaked in the truck series was in 2006. In 06, he started all 25 events, and while he didn't get a win like he did in 2005, he got 19 top 10s in those 25 races, with seven of those being top fives. He also led 160 laps, and he had an average finish of ninth, which was an improvement of seven over the previous year, which is why he finished 10 spots higher in points than 2005 as he finished third. Now, when you look at the Xfinity series, this gets more backed up. Now, the first four years he was in this series, he ran minimal races. He did okay. He got top fives and top tens in 2003, but he didn't have a stable ride in this series until 2006 with Michael Walter Racing, where he did spend a lot of his career. He was a Toyota lifer for the most part, and if you look back, almost his entire career was with Toyota. Now, in 2006, he started 15 races. This also was when he was doing well in the truck series, so it kind of coincides with his march up the ranks. In 2007, when he was going into that season, not too much was expected. He got a win, though, which is an important thing. Five top tens and 12 top fives. He led 287 laps, and he had an average finish of 15th, while again having three DNFs. But in 35 races compared to 15, that actually really wasn't too bad. He also finished second in the point standings. Now, back then, the then-known NASCAR Bush Series was dominated by cup drivers, and most of them did not go full-time. So this is kind of inflated, but it is pretty cool to see that he did that well. And in 2008, which was his last full-time season in this series, he got more top fives and top tens, but did finish seventh in points, even with a higher average finish. Now, the big marker here on his career was his cup career. He got one start in 2005, which he didn't do all too hot in, but where he really got his big start was 2007, which would have been his rookie year. He started 26 of the 36 races. Toyota that year had a horrible issue of just not being able to make races. No matter who it was, whether it was Dale Jarrett or whether it was Michael Waltrip, Jeremy Mayfield, didn't matter who it was. Very talented drivers were missing a lot of races, so he didn't get any top 10s, top 5s, nothing like that. He only led three laps on the year. It really wasn't all that great. But the big marker here is that of the 26 races he did make, he failed to finish nine of them. Now, Toyota that year was not the greatest. Toyota had a lot of issues keeping cars on track, and engine programs in general in 2007 had a lot of issues due to a lot of changes under the hood that made it basically a curveball season for different teams. But by 2008, when the COT was going full-time, which is what Toyota was putting their money in, he had actually started finishing in the top 10. He started all 36 races, which was an improvement over 2007, got four top 10s, got a pole, led a lot of laps, and he actually finished his highest 22nd in the points. He had four DNFs on the year, five less than he got in 2007, while starting 10 more races. So in 2009, it was logical to think he would make another step up. 
He did get a lot more top fives and top tens, but the big marker here is he finally broke through with a win in a range shortened Coke 600. He finished 16th in points and had an average finish of 16th. And he again had zero DNFs. That's the big one. He took care of his equipment and he maximized what his equipment gave him at the time. So that would be the peak of his career. In 2010, he took a bit of a step back in top 10s and consistency, though he did get one more top five, and he got what most would consider a very legitimate win at Chicagoland Speedway. But again, you had that little bit of digression in his performance. 2011 saw him start to fall off a cliff. Michael Walter bracing that year was down for the most part from the way that it did, especially with Rudiman. In 2011, he only had one top five, three top tens, and here's the thing. He led eight laps. He led over 100 laps in 08, 09, and 2010, but he didn't lead more than 10 in 2011. This led to his average finish being a 22.3 and for him to finish 28th in the points. Now, in 2011 going into 2012, he was replaced by Clint Boyer in a rebranded 15 car. Out of a ride, he took the next one available, BK Racing, where he started 25 races and he finished 34th in the points with an average finish of 29th on the season and 8 DNFs. But a lot of this has to do with the fact that BK Racing did not have good equipment. 2013 saw him start every single race and still get 9 DNFs because it was BK Racing. This would be the worst season of his career. Now, he'd get three starts in 2014, but after that, would call it a quits. So, looking back at his career, you kind of have to look at who you could compare him to. And that's obviously his teammates. So, in 2007, he was teammates with Michael Waltrip and Dale Jarrett. He made more races than both of those drivers did in 2007. And while Waltrip got two top tens on the year, he, on average, was not making as many races as Rudiman. Dale Jarrett had zero top fives, top tens, poles, or laps led on the year, and he had a worse average finish than Rudiman in just about as many races. In 2008, he was again teammates with Waltrip, his car owner, and Michael McDowell, who he had to give up his double zero ride for because of the owner points problems. Waltrip started every single race that year, and was again outperformed by David Rudiman. McDowell started 20, but McDowell was just not ready for cup at that point, so he did pretty terribly. So again, Rudiman, top dog at MWR in 2008. 2009 saw Waltrip make almost every race. While Rudiman took that step up, Waltrip didn't. Again, Waltrip a husk of his former self. So when you look so far, you can say, well, he did outperform these drivers, but the big problem is none of these drivers are really an apt comparison. The big comparison comes in in 2010 in the form of Martin Shrix Jr., who was his teammate and took over as top dog at MWR. While Rudiman did outperform him in 2010, getting another win than him, getting five more top fives than him and two more top tens, as well as finishing four spots higher, it was clear that the guard was changing as in 2011, Shrix took a step up, whereas Rudiman took a step down. Truex got 12 top 10s on the year. Nothing great, but it was the most that any MWR driver had ever gotten for the team. And he also finished 10 spots higher in points. So it's pretty clear that Rudiman's ceiling is about a 16th to 20th place driver. And that's when everything goes right. He can get a win, he can put himself in position, but he's not all that great. So there are five big moments in Rudiman's career that I look at that define him. The first one is his first year in Cup in 2007. That team was woefully unprepared, Toyota was terrible, and just in general, that year was a write-off. The first really big moment in a good way was his first truly competitive race, and that was in 2008 at Richmond. He was racing up front with guys like Kyle Busch, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jimmy Johnson, and Tony Stewart, and leading tons of laps in that race. Ultimately, he didn't win due to handling as well as just poor strategy and a team that just was not as good as guys from Hendrick Motorsports and Joe Gibbs Racing, but it was something that showed that Rudiman had potential. In single races, his potential was that he could compete against really good drivers and teams. 
Then, of course, the biggest moment of his career was winning the Coke 600, though a lot of people at the time discredited him for this because it was a rain race. The big one, and this is Rudiman's crowning achievement when it comes to earning a win on the track, was 2010 at the Chicagoland Speedway. That was his second and final win in Cup, where he led 52 laps and beat out guys like Carl Edwards and Jeff Gordon. So, you gotta say, that right there is the top moment, the height of Rudiman's career when it comes to performance. The very bottom is the final big moment and the one that a lot of people remember him for. At Martinsville in 2012, Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson were fighting for the win. It would have been the 200th win for Hendrick Motorsports as well. Until, with a couple laps to go, with two flat tires after being told to stay out by his car owner, Tommy Baldwin, Rudiman stopped on the track. He stopped on the track to bring out a caution because his team needed the owner's points is what the excuse was. Rudiman was obviously distraught after the race as he knew that he had screwed up majorly. But to this day, this is one of the biggest moments that people remember of his career. So overall, thinking of his career, how good was David Rudiman? He was a mediocre driver at best. At worst, below average. I hate saying that because the dude seems like a very nice, likable guy, but he was just not cut out for cup competition. I think he could have carved out a very good career in the Xfinity series or even the truck series, but of course, at that time, cup was everything. Now, with me saying all this, I want to pass it on to you. How good do you think David Rudiman was as a NASCAR driver? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content like this throughout the season. And like the NASCAR Weekly Podcast, which will be on my channel tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And also, to all my channel members, thank you so much for your continued support. So until next time, have a good one.